myself uh, dr sunanda gt i am belong to uh, karnataka uh, i am a uh, msc nursing and phd holder presently i am serving in the institute uh, darwad institute of mental health and neurosciences in the position of uh, assistant professor past 11 years i have uh, more than 22 years of uh, teaching experience and i have my little uh, contribution to the publication the, that is a 25 plus uh, articles i have published and i i do participated many conferences and uh, uh, workshops and seminars seminars as a delegate or a resource person uh, this is my brief introduction uh, thank you uh, first of all i will be sincere thanks to the team uh, international journal of education and also the institute of nursing education i believe and all the team members and given me an opportunity to be share my one of the uh, knowledge within this uh, webinar and a special thanks to the uh, dr nanda prakash sir and given us to be has felt that uh, we are a desirable candidate for to be contribute to the knowledge in this webinar uh, uh, and uh, uh, we will be go ahead with the uh, my present presentation today uh, what is the technical and professional informatics standards uh, how to be improve the healthcare quality evidence based practice uh, many delegates are there nearly 157 participants are there uh, past 3 uh, uh, days you are uh, listening the classes on Uh, regarding of the information technology how the technology will be help to be uh, boost of healthcare delivery system and uh, even education and uh, what else uh, as we know that the last 3 years uh, maybe by intentionally or maybe interestingly or forcefully uh, we are try to equip ourselves to be uh, adapting to the information technology in the healthcare system not only in the healthcare system even in other systems also due to covid reasons uh, we are tried ourselves to be as much as possible comfortable to be equip ourselves to be in the uh, information technology so with that uh, view uh, as we know that information technology how it is uh, fastened to be our uh, healthcare system and to make ourselves to be comfortable to be work in the healthcare system and uh, what are, what are the healthcare uh, information technology software available all those things that uh, many eminent speakers have spoke i believe uh, today my topic is something like concluding topic uh, it is as something like just brief reviewing of uh, what are the things we have learned how it can be implicated in to be improve the quality healthcare and as well as to be one of the we are in the era of evidence based practice Uh, everything we look uh, back uh, that is what is the evidence to be implicating of uh, this uh, health system in that way how information technology will be uh, enhancing and improving our healthcare system quality and as well as to the evidence based practice in the healthcare uh, delivery system in that we we are moving please share change the slide ma'am next slide please Uh, as we know one of the saying by the david do blue mental uh, information is the life fluid of the medicine and health information technology is destined to be the circulatory system for the system as very well said yes uh, as we know that we are all practicing with the certain information already it has drawn in the uh, healthcare uh, by professional previously that is considered to be life blood for all type of the medicine or maybe healthcare professionals to be practice and presently in the present scenario uh, health information technology is a destined to be the circulatory system so without uh, information technology uh, we are unable to be move with uh, with the quality or maybe something what we call as a practicing of the healthcare system so in that level we have reached so this is very well said wordings with moving uh, slide change please so what were the uses we can be come with the information technology to be improve the healthcare quality as we know uh, from past 3 days with the eminent sp uh, speakers spoke about the information technology what is that and how to be used it is mainly allows you to create electronic health records that provide in depth real time data for all healthcare professionals to make critical decision concerning their patient safety 
and also healthcare information technology also empowers the patient to take greater control over their health data by providing access via hospital portals so this is what some simple introduction i have to move with the uh, what is the healthcare quality and quality and other things change the slide please so before moving to the what is uh, healthcare quality or quality healthcare what is mean of quality most of the time uh, it triggers to be when we talk about the quality uh, we need to understand the exactly the meaning of quality it is a standard of something as measured it is against to the other things of similar kind some comparison is there how it was there and what we we are expected to be called as a better than that so that is what we have degree of excellence of something we call as a quality and also in distinct to attribute or characteristic possessed by someone or something so that is what is a, a simple meaning of quality indicates and uh, slide change please and we'll move to the uh, what is the quality healthcare or healthcare quality uh, very simple we consider health healthcare quality in the aspect of three modes one is uh, uh, clinical effectiveness so whatever we are providing the services it must be effective and it should be have something like uh, both the side maybe health professionals has to be have some greater satisfaction as well as to the patients so this is what clinical effectiveness and patient safety this is must very important presence in our we considered that patient safety security confidentiality etc and also experiences of the patient how felt the patients are shown the effectiveness are the felt to be satisfied with the healthcare things so now we are in the era of like patient centered or family centered it is more we are going to the consumer need based services we are providing the healthcare system so our quality always it look to the the individual or the family or the patient how they felt and how, what way the greater their need as met in that three more we consider what is healthcare quality so move slide please so one of the case today i wanted to be her narrative uh, a 65 year old man with a number of health issues come to the hospital because he is having trouble breathing that lk team helps to resolve issue but forgets the what the standard treatment that causes unnecessary harm to the patient so this is what we have something what exactly it required to the providing to the patient as forgotten by lk team and a subsequent medication error makes the situation worse and also leading a stay that is much longer than to the anticipated the finally what we understood from this case study what required for to be improve the condition with the effectively we should manage the patient condition and resolve of his issue certain guidelines a certain standard things we forgotten and we are try to be like as he comes we are try to be uh, give the something management uh, that make to be something like error or maybe long time to be recovery or long time to be get is needs to be met so that is what the lkt must adhere to the certain treatment guidelines to avoid subsequent medical errors so this is this case scenario will make us to be what is quality healthcare and how the quality we have to be improving the uh, medical healthcare uh, system so slide change please so coming to the exactly some meanings are giving our definition has given here the healthcare quality is a level of value provided by any health resources as determined by some measurement so we have something value which has healthcare resources we have provided that should be measured so that measurement has to be always to be highest effectiveness has to be seen so certain goals are there to be uh, we have to be accepted and we have to be make that how to be what to be called as a healthcare quality in the medical resource mainly high quality will be need them that is one is ensure the quality of life so overall accessing for the healthcare services in our setting we try to give them something quality life and curing of illnesses and also as much as possible extending of life expectancy so they with these some of the goals we keep in the mind to be called what is healthcare quality and moving next slide change the slide and some researchers are previous slide 
So some researchers has used variety of the quality measures to be attempt that how the healthcare quality must be include. One is count of a therapies reduction or lessening of disease identified medical diagnosis. So what it means something like we should see that as much as possible, uh, whatever the therapies has to be see that appropriate therapy has to be started to be according to the need of the diagnosis. It's not like that unusually the many therapies at a time to be start and finally there is no improvement and again rechanging of the therapy. This type of the waste it is something to be considered as a, uh, something error or maybe delaying of his diagnosis or delaying of his prognosis and other things. So it is a research has felt there to be quality measures in the view of reduction in the therapies and possible the best alternative therapy or best uh, selective therapies has to be indicated according to diagnosis. And another one point is the quality measurement can be indicates a decrease in the number of risk factors. So most of the time the patients or family or individual come across with the many risk factors they will become. Uh, our focus is not only in the present scenario what they are suffering or treat the present situation. So our uh, focus on to be manage or reducing of the risk factor and also which people have following preventive care also how they have to be enhanced or go ahead with the preventive care and also survey of health indicators this is also one which is very important maybe the health indicators like uh, some vital signs like like maybe uh, infant mortality rates uh, death rates or maternal mortality rates or life expectancy these are all many indicators, health indicators. We try to be see that what the quality is going to be given in the healthcare system. Next slide, please. So here, one of the definition has given clearly the quality uh, of care is the degree to which health services for individuals and populations increase the likelihood of desired health outcomes. So it is based on evidence-based professional knowledge and is critical for achieving universal health coverage. So this is very clearly says the degree, how much we are given the services to the individual or population that is increased the likelihood of desired health outcome. This is finally the patient or individual or the family must we have some satisfaction and shown in their outcomes. And also it is more we are boosting for the evidence-based professional knowledge. So in the present scenario for everything should be taken that's what was the evidence how it has, what the research has done for that particular therapy and medicine and other things. So more of our knowledge has to be boosted in the evidence based and also critical for achieving the whatever the universal health coverage has to be uh, implicated in the uh, population. So next slide. So quality of care plays an important role describing the iron triangle of healthcare relationship so very simple we considered as iron triangle of healthcare relationship that is one is quality cost and accessibility there are the three component we keep into the mind when we say it is a quality healthcare that one is quality so quality maybe we we are not compromising of any type of the uh, cost but we have to be boost the quality and also the quality also should be maintained and the cost also should be economy and accessibility now presently we are in the health, health information technology what we are looking rather to be more we have to be talk about the quality or cost it more accessible we have to reach to each and every person has to be who are all needed in the healthcare uh, services so that is there are the three component we are understanding about the quality care one is maybe quality cost effective and accessibility and also researchers have smoothed that healthcare quality is something problems caused by overuse, underuse or misuse of the healthcare resources also. Many times we are using uh, overusing of healthcare services or resources. It may not be required. Many times uh, we maybe uh, think about general population. We are actually going to the some of the issues to the hospital. A list of investigations the physician or the medical practitioners are given us whether they are required that investigations to be undergo or not, they will not be known. But simply at least it is comes and a lot of money we are expending for that. Finally, all results comes with the normal. But that is a, what is the indication of that will be waste. So like there's something overuse of the things also, it may not be called as a quality and even underuse also. 
we can't neglect or we can't ignore the situation so that is more important so uh, sometime knowingly and knowingly we will not encourage to go that uh, investigation or that treatment so that also it impact on the quality and also misuse of the health resources so in these three aspect also we consider what is healthcare quality who next slide so we have there are the six domains of quality we are going to assess here and we are understanding one is efficiency so that what may be we have to be called as our services to be efficient and timeline so that is what we call is accessibility so now healthcare information technology make to be achieved in this timelines so we are very fast we are accessing of all the health records within no time will be reach out and will be try to be help them so this is timelines and safety and equity and effectiveness and person center so these are the six domains we are using and assessing and we will be increased how to describe the healthcare quality next slide so this uh, six domains uh, in 1999 the institute of medicine uh, america has released uh, describe the quality of care the safe is avoiding injuries to the patient from care that is intended to help them this is a uh, very very commonly we considered that is that the patient should be safe enough to be when they are in the hand of the health care team and effective avoiding overuse or misuse of the services or resources or care and more it is patient centered providing care that is unique to the patient's need the patient and family has to be taken role to be given choice to them to be choose of their health services and under they have right to be understand what the health care is required and what type of the therapy they are receiving whatever medication they are receiving so they are completely have in the role of decision making and also we have to be convince them to be understand what is it is going on to them or how it is going to be uh, in the hospital or in the healthcare team so that is more we considered is a patient centered is a one of the important domain in the uh, quality healthcare and also timely reducing the wait times harmful delays for the patient and providers so this is very common now in the health, healthcare information technology is as boosted in this area like online visit is a telemedicine is a telenursing is a so we are with the support of technology we are very fast we are accessing to the needs of the patient and we try to be help so reducing the wait times and aren't for delay for the patient and providers and another one is efficient is nothing but avoiding waste of equipment supplies idea and energy so in this area also it's more important we need to see that the, all the resources has to be very economically to be used into the consider only not only for the hospital equipments and see that the patients uh, money should not be unusually wasted for their uh, services so that is avoiding waste of equipment supplies ideas and energy and equitable is nothing but providing care that does not vary across intensive personal characteristics maybe age caste creed or anything so such type things should not be made in the choices of uh, providing of services always to be considered everyone each and every person is same to be when receiving of healthcare system in the uh, healthcare delivery system so move to the next slide please next slide so uh, why is the quality of care MPA is important in the healthcare system as we know that quality care is essential in healthcare because it directly impact the patient's health outcomes satisfaction and cost associated with the care so more very important we are considered here patient's view patient satisfaction the patient outcome how they have felt and met their needs when they are come to the hospital or in the healthcare team and also more we bother presently is cost associated with care so now we are considered medical uh facilities are something very competitive like business oriented it as moving in the uh, universe uh, they are comparing the what the cost if i go to this hospital how much i will be going to be spend or if i go to another hospital with the same treatment how i will so something it is a cost associated with the care so uh, they must be have more economically the receiving of the services that that is one we consider in the patient's outcome uh that's quality we are assessing our it is uh, how it important for the patient center that is impact on to the patient's outcome satisfaction and costs and as additionally it is a valuable advocacy tool for continuous improvement which is going to be improve as our lk team members our lk professionals can be equip themselves or go ahead how we have to be improve ourselves in the providing of the quality care and also helping lk record 
providers also policy makers more important policy makers and advocates identify and address the area that which where we are to be enhanced and improve ourselves in the providing of the quality services so these are some of the points are narrating what is the quality of care is important in the healthcare system next slide so here we are considered so another some of the examples we considered in the healthcare quality it going to be moved in this area one is hospital readmissions it will be reduces as much as possible make sure that the patient should not be have get again readmission relapsing so that is we need to be considered uh, specifically from past 15 years i am working in the mental health care system so readmission is one of the challenging issue where we are failing for the patient coming for again readmission so in that area something we have to be think more in initiatively how whether maybe we are going to be providing up the services so that again again relapsing and readmissions are there so that is the hospital rehab uh, readmissions reduction preventing healthcare associated infections and improving chronic disease management and enhancing the mental health care so these are certain aspect we considered the healthcare initiatives to be regarding to the quality of care and also with that certain healthcare needs also to be contributed one is i told already patient outcomes increase satisfaction of the patient and reduce healthcare cost by focusing evidence based practices and more we are bothered about patient safety and personalized care next slide so moving to the next methods to assess and how to improve the healthcare quality so here we are coming up with the, some of the common framework how to assess the healthcare quality and what way we can improve our healthcare uh, quality so there are three domains we considered here that is one is structure process and outcomes so we'll see for the next next slide so all three domains are tightly linked and built each other so that is for example improvement in structure automatically process and observed outcomes also will be good enough so some example here so improvement in the process are that is a clinical practice guidelines so we have very good clinical practice guidelines or protocols or standing orders are we are adopted in our hospital healthcare system so totally it may help for the analysis of the even we can go for the good analysis cost efficiency and how to make the risk certain risk areas we are identified and managing up those areas these are all something proactive steps to be prevent the medical errors so these are some of the examples how that is a uh, all three dime, uh, domains linked and built each other and uh, uh, boosting up the quality care next slide so here we have model clearly says that the structure process and outcome this is something continuum model it clearly explains that the structure is nothing but physical and organizational characteristics where health care occurs so that is something what we call is a physical infrastructure the hospital setup the facilities in the hospital the process is nothing but focus on the care delivered example may be services diagnosis or treatment etc and outcome is something effect of healthcare on the status of patient and populations next slide please so here in detail if we go with the, the structure that is nothing but access to the care so what type of the suppose if i most of the time if any health issues we will look forward for the where that many multi uh, that is a uh, maybe uh, multiple that is the settings maybe where they can get the all type of the uh, facilities maybe they can uh, go for the cardiac they can go for the neuro like that we have something like all type of the facilities where they can get with us uh, that type of the setting we try to be search and uh, even the financial resources uh, what type of the cost effectively or economically i can get the uh, treatment or maybe the therapies operations or etc and more now we look forward about the health insurances so everyone we look the maybe is there any that hospital is have coverage or have the facility for covering of health insurances and other thing and facilities also and equipments and human resources how what type of the specialist and what type of the trained and uh, uh, expertized team is there in that uh, hospital and even organizational structure where they can have the facility like accommodation or maybe setting a different type of like uh, deluxe rooms are there or maybe even that is a lesser space sector what type of the facilities good ventilation all these factors we see 
and also neighborhood factors also how it going to be affected so these are something structural things we are considered that quality care can be improved and in the process mainly the technical quality and care that adheres to the established guidelines and what the guidelines and what protocol they are following for the treating of the cases and how they considering for in the prioritized services or any emergency things on that area we will be look in the process and interpersonal quality and that is nothing but adequate information sharing between providers and patient finally in the outcomes we look how much hospitalization the duration of hospitalization maybe it's a long hospitalization may consumes a lot of money so to be in the shorter period how they well they are prognosed in the conditions and that is hospitalization disease activity how they can prevent or any damages or any complications and mortality rate of that hospital preventable comorbidities quality of life and functional status cost satisfaction these are the certain areas we consider the outcome how we are going to assess and improve our healthcare quality so move next slide so here one of the slide that research input i wanted to be narrative so healthcare quality in a systematic lupus erythematous as done using of the dan bedian's conceptual framework to understand what we know that is a three components a three domains it is a uh, developed by dan bedian's conceptual framework so here one of the uh, experts are the e lawson and j uh, has done as published in uh, uh, 2012 in the international journal of clinical rheumatology so this review was clearly explained that using of this denabedians model uh, how we, we can be uh, providing of the quality of care in the systematic lupus erythematous uh, uh, patients so that was how that assessed uh, structure process and improve the outcomes as assessed by applying of this model next slides please so we have some methods to improve the quality care there are uh, four methods we are adapted that is one is organizational perspective how we call as healthcare quality has improved and healthcare professional perspective and patient perspective and technology and security perspective so one by one let we see in elaborately next slide in the organizational perspective that is what we call as a cost efficiency so many times i told cost effective now everyone will look and compare the price of the treatment or therapies or hospital cost or bedding all these things cost efficiency or cost effectiveness it is nothing but benefit of a service exceed the cost or maybe include to provide the services how much it is limited with the economically i can access of the same type of the medical services there so this is we consider in the organizational perspective it must be cost effective services has to be provided are it considered as a one component as a healthcare quality and also healthcare services sometimes not cost efficient due to either over utilization or under utilization many times i told you it is maybe not be efficiently utilizing of the resources and or maybe over utilization so that may uh, impact on to the cost efficiency also and also one of the example i can quote here maybe early cancer detection and treatment it leads to the decrease cancer survival rate so this is very a clear correlation is there so they are ignored for the maybe some clear indication or symptoms are shown that there is a chance of suspecting of cancer but not in early finding of the exact condition it delayed in the treatments and finally the survival rate has also come down so this is a way how we are maybe over utilization or under utilization it may occur so that is one we have to be considered it's more about the cost effectiveness or cost efficiency so next slide and another one point is clinical pathways so what are the outcome based and patient centered case management tools we use on to the interdisciplinary approach maybe facilitating coordination of care among multiple clinical departments and care workers and caregivers so how we are using of certain guidelines and protocols and standing orders to be how to treat up the patients when they are in the placed in our hospital so that is what we have clinical pathways and also using clinical pathways to be always reduce the cost errors or improve the quality by providing a systematic approach to assessing healthcare outcomes 
so in this area definitely we can be implicate the healthcare information technology to accessing of our proper channelizing of our healthcare pathways by sharing of the patient data to the different uh, specialist or maybe immediately maybe if the for example if we, in the opd the one of the patient has suggested go for the x ray uh, it is not required to be to be uh, wait for to be until get the film even immediately after is x ray done that maybe in the opd the specialist who has advised he can able to access the what is the x ray report it has given so it is the, with the data you can be access about the what the report that x ray has given and you can uh, reducing of the time or waiting period or taken off immediately action what it is required for the patient this is something like the clinical pathways so how we have to be share of the data and what effectively we can be improve the uh, quality care with the information technology and also this is cost also will be reduces as well as variations in the practice so this is something uh, different variations are different people what they have given the suggestions are something it is a, a overlapping duplications are missing out those things can be reduced by having the uh, this proper clinical pathways uh, now presently the information technology in this area it is a wonderful way it is going to be improve the healthcare quality Uh, definitely uh, the patient data is very soon it going to be circulated with all the way of the clinical uh, pathways and it help the early recognition early insertion of the treatment or any specialist advice is required or any expertise need has to be uh, taken if with all that uh, system what it is going to be boost up in this area the clinical pathways this is we consider one of the aspect in the organizational perspective Uh, what is how to develop or improve the quality care? Next slide. So next is the staffing. So this is the area we need to be considered more the human resources. What type of the expertise team is there uh, presently working in that? But in the healthcare system or healthcare hospital. So that is what one of the study that is a, a research done in the care homes in England has shown that. organization staffing strategy can have impact on the quality of care so that is nothing but more vacant position in the staff can lead to worse rating by the care quality commission so this is something report has clearly state that the staff retention or maybe keeping up the staff or maybe human resources or expertise team in the hospital also it is considered we can it it going to be boost up the healthcare quality so how we are make them to be tenured to be work there and what type of the facility or experts are available in that uh, that particular center and that is going to be higher the quality care it's going to be boosted so this is we look that many who are all there the doctors and who are all there specialist how the nursing care how the nursing uh, people are there expertized are any uh, unique feature as they compared to the other hospital in the view of the human resources are the present experts i mean health team is serving in that center so that area it is one we considered in the healthcare quality and now even the information technology very well it is boosting to be how to be uh, finding suppose if i plan for going for some of the uh, health center first i will look that i will take the review of the people who are all already admitted undergone the treatment in that area and which are all the human resources are working and what type of the review that particular expert having what credentiality he is having how many surgery he has conducted what publication he has done what research he has participated in all that way uh, that information technology also we are very much useful in this area that is a staffing is we considered one quality care uh, uh, improving area so more advancedly we can accessing of the data of the human resources are working in that particular hospital through the use of the health information technology next move to next slide so next coming to the health professional perspective how we are going to be improve the healthcare quality so here given the health professionals can just by its outcome maybe technical performance of the care and by interpersonal relationship maybe outcome is a change in the patient's health such as reduction in pain relapses death rate etc and mainly in significant initiatives to improve healthcare quality outcomes have been undertaken that 
clinical practice guidelines, cost efficiency, critical pathways, and risk management. So this is something what maybe the in the first cost effective staffing and all that organizational perspective, what types of the healthcare facilities are there, we look. But when come to the healthcare professional perspective, uh, how comfortably as being a nurse, I can work in that particular hospital. Maybe you, uh, maybe sophisticated, sophisticated facilities are there and uh, maybe environmental uh, things, what it is there to be safer to be, how should we work? Uh, not only the salary security and how comfortably I can uh, implicate my practice or my knowledge into the practice. So that is matters. For example, if I am an expert in that particular area, but there is no facilities to be provided, maybe like infrastructure or the maybe equipments or the drugs or a certain uh, whatever the facility is not provided me to be implicate my practice totally. I feel burden. I feel sometime to be leave from here. I'm wasting my energy here. I'm losing my capability. This type of the perspective it comes by the health professionals to be not to be. 100% uh, input in that particular area. So that is what we have healthcare professional perspective is nothing but they must be have proper clinical practice guidelines. So how they have to be uh, implicate their practice into the maybe in the system and what cost efficiency they are on critical pathways, how the data it is sharing and what way it is going to be implicated. So and also risk management, how maybe risk management is not only in the view of patient risk management, even for the healthcare professionals risk management, also it is a highest priority. It looks for the quality services or quality healthcare. So next slide, please. And coming to the patient perspective, here the patient satisfaction is one of the important criteria we considered here. The satisfaction, how the main qualitative measure the patient is going to be gain of that felt that yes, I met my needs, or I uh, cured up my illness when I come over here, or my money has uh, uh, up to the level it has utilized to be get back my health. This is something satisfaction things has done, and also how we can somewhat controversial measures also in the quality care many time. Individuality will be there. So every time can't be considered the patient satisfaction for the quality. But same way, we should be have considered the more importance in the patient perspective also. It may be feedback for the health professionals. So sometimes it may not be taken considered if one patient uh, given something review with the Facebook or maybe in the WhatsApp or in the uh, media or in the uh, something like sharing of their views into the uh, net or internet. So can't we see, felt that yes, that maybe that hospital is not good to the seeing of the patient reviews. No, sometimes that patient may not be have what he has intended to come may not be met. So only thing those feedback or satisfaction or the surveys can be taken for boosting of the uh, human resources works in that particular hospital or maybe uh, even infrastructure and other things. So in addition, the patient satisfaction always correlate with the patient involvement, decision making and patient centered care. So we should be very careful what type of the patient uh, input has to be taken for the consider. So even many times uh, we will look back to, uh, in the health, health information technology in this view also, uh, when we are going for any doctors, the reviews will be read first how that patient uh, has given the review or uh, giving the uh, star or maybe rating of the doctor services or hospital services. These things that information technology will be boost of that even patient perspective, how to improve the quality. It's not only for the uh, considered for the patient, view, but it is encouraged to be quality services can be provided by uh, improving the structure and improving the process of that what the health professionals can be equipped themselves and uh, face the or improve the satisfaction of the patient. Next move slide. So patient evaluation of care can be identified, opportunity for improvement in care, reducing the cost, monitoring performance of health plans and providing comparison across, across the healthcare institutions. As we know that we are comparing now, we see that maybe if I go this hospital, I can reduce the money this much or maybe reducing of my hospitalization 
are very fast i can come back to my home or i can be get surgery what the date which i have uh, leave applied i can be completed so these are all the view uh, again it is uh, something opportunity for improvementing uh, in the quality care you will be considered in the patient's uh, perspective who next slide next slide so next to coming to the in the technology and security perspective if you look in this area uh, we have something like how uh, in the technological perspective we will be uh, considered as a quality care here one of the patient's perception also considered here one study or the survey has conducted in 20, uh, 2015 a cancer patient so that who have more positive attitude toward about the health information tools and from their providers use the tools more subsequently how i hear pursue care quality from their providers so what exactly in the present era we have that uh, in implicating of the health information technology uh, how it is safe and comfortable accessible and usable and uh, standardized uh, information we receive Uh, that is more boosting of even for the quality services also maybe we have uh, reviews we are taking and immediately will access to the website and see that how that uh, patient reviews infrastructure what all working in that all these things uh, make us to be more comfortable and developing up the positive attitude and feeling of secure to be moved to that area and getting up the services this is what one of the very important uh, the component we consider how technology will be made to be improve the quality care so we are something sharing of information very soon and we are accessing with in our sitting uh, places only and uh, find that how well that hospital is serving and giving the facility for the patient uh, with the reviews and the grade ratings or maybe the facilities etc so that way the information technology or technology also in the perspective we are going to be improve the our measure of the are assess of the quality healthcare next slide so here uh, finally the organizational perspective when we look or maybe how we are going to determine the quality health care we have certain agencies also is there now come up with a very much uh, we are uh, in the healthcare system we are more, more bothered about uh, we are accredited we are uh, affiliated we are recognized we are approved this type of the word we are our hospital is nabh accredited nac accredited this type of the fascinated the things are moving in the society uh, this is what we have certain committees or certain agencies are there in the uh, in the world to be look forward about the uh, determine the what level of the quality services are provided in that particular organization here we have certain standards are there one is government health systems also is there and the private health systems like accreditation programs such as hospital accreditations are there health associations are there are they they can wish to go for even international healthcare accreditations also and philanthropic foundations are there so these are many even health research institutions are there so these are certain organizations are uh, presently available to be uh, can be assessed our institute to be whether we are meeting certain quality or not the standards we are achieving are meeting or not so this is about the organizations which helping or boosting up the health care health care quality in the settings next slide so these organization mainly uh, look for the concept of quality in the health care and measure that how the quality and encourage them to regular measurement of quality and providing the evidences that how that interventions are effective in that way so we have uh, in our country some of the organizations are Uh, they are presently to be uh, monitoring of our quality here uh, we have begin with the uh, some of organization one is maybe national accreditation board for hospital and health care providers nabh more commonly every hospital will look hard dream about uh, my hospital has to be nabh approved and we have patient uh, safety alliances associations are there and we have icha and national health system resource centers are there and we have all india institute of medical sciences also leading some of the healthcare quality work in india and even cro reasons also is this maybe these are some of the agencies are there are the commissions are or maybe the committees are these candidates to be uh, monitoring of our healthcare quality in our settings and give some accreditation and affiliation and approved uh, this is something standard labeling of our uh, 
uh, centers or hospitals to be uh, we are uh, standardized we are providing up the quality services next slide so coming to the the exactly core of my session how we can use the technical and professional informatics on the improve improve the healthcare quality next slide next slide here one of the uh, example i can say here uh, show that here uh, how we have with the showing of the uh, mainly the clinical uh, one of the uh, agency has done with the uh, how this information technology will reduce the medical errors and improve the patient safety here one review i took i collected there's a otriaza e clan cm and ehro use of information technology to improve the quality of healthcare in the united state as done in 2003 and had some example of projects they are conducted here uh, here improving primary care patient safety with the android dss support uh, that's a diagnostic uh, support decision support system as they one of the software they were developed and they were done with the how this Uh, ambulatory setting and clinical impact and cost effectiveness point of care and it ambulatory this is a, a decision support system as help for reducing of the medical care errors as they conducted in the uh, in the aspect of patient safety uh, using of the uh, that is a dss system and another project they have conducted uh, mining complex clinical data for patient safety research Uh, here the researchers are developing an infrastructure to develop uh, to support automated surveillance of errors by applying a natural language processor to code the information contained in patient's electronic medical records to detect and characterize the medical errors this is also one of the software or the project they were launched in the it and they were could find that electronic uh, patient electronic medical records and how to detect the uh, characterize medical errors they were done next slide uh, and also one more the project they are conducted on that same uh, study using uh, prospective minimal data set data to enhance resident safety so this research project will determine whether preventable adverse outcomes for the fragile uh, frail elderly population in long term care settings can be avoided by using computers that alert nursing and other staff to likely would have problems such as fall pressure ulcer urinary tract infection and other things so this is a some special the data enhancing software has created so when the long term services that is something like alarming bells or something clue or something red or something signal can be given when the patient is having certain injuries or the pressure ulcers or any infections if they have so that type of the surface it can be because most of the long term patients they will equipped with the monitors so they can be use of this software to be help for to be identifying in early uh, identification of uh, like uh, falls pressure ulcers and urinary tract infections and one more that software that using android technology to reduce errors in the adhd care so this project is using real time point of care android computerized decision support model to reduce the medical errors in the treatment of attention deficit hyperactivity disorders in the children so this is also one of the special uh, that is a project or that it uh, the software has created how we can be uh, reducing up the medical errors especially in the adhd children and linking user error to lab and field study of medical informatics so this project again explore the relationship between human machine and environmental factors how they are associated with the operation of infusion devices in clinical settings and finally the project will identify and characterize the properties of infusion devices environmental conditions and operator conditions uh, cognitions that prompt use of the maybe uh, avoiding or some the errors in the theory so next slide these are some of the examples of that uh, study has been uh, reported that how that information technology projects Uh, that the softwares can be used for the reducing of the medical errors and uh, even that uh, complexity of modern medicine it is inevitable that uh, information technology will play an ever increasing role improving the healthcare quality it is understood and as we noted that the institute of medicine that is committee on quality healthcare in america uh, information technology must as a uh, play as a central role in the redesign of the healthcare system with the substantial improvement in the quality is to be achieved over the com 
coming decades because now presently we are in the era of information technology how we have to be equipped ourselves to be make utilization of the Dr. Sunanda, your screen is frozen. I think she. Hmm. Slide, please. Yes. Okay. So once. Um, I do be. Okay. and uh, federico f the impact of health information technology and the patient safety that has conducted in uh, saudi that is a medical journal in 2017 uh, let us see the what the uh, main the uh, summary has given of this uh, article next slide so here we have our health information technology will be help for the boosting of the safety of the patient one is computerized physician order entry this is a one uh, so technical things as implanted in the computer so this is help to reduction in the rate of medication or errors only observed when integrated with the uh, clinical decision support system they are did Uh, and also clinical decision support uh, one of the software they are planned uh, given importance here improvement in the process adherence medication ordering vaccination lab ordering and clinical outcomes can be given the early time and given the signal to be uh, go ahead for the for the things and one more electronic sign out and and of tools so this software has helped to be improve the and over process and fewer omission of critical patient information and weak evidences in reducing medical errors so this uh, software has shown that and our process may be changing shift and other things especially for the nurses or the doctors has to be given the changing of the shift and other things how they can be given the information to the next shift persons so that area this electronic uh, sign out or hand off tools as used but less evidences reducing the medical errors as shown and one more the barcode medication administration bcma uh, as one it has shown the effectiveness in the reduction in the medication errors and adverse drug reactions and reduction in the mislabeled laboratory specimens as shown and uh, smart pumps are there insufficient evidence and reduction in medical error, but reduction in the pump programs errors also as considered maybe the timely how much that medication has been infused and those things as like it has uh, Uh, given something timing and how it has to be how much amount of the drugs has to be infused that that area this part pumps will be worked out but medication errors reduction has insufficient evidence as found and patient data management system uh, reduction in ch charting time increasing the time spent on direct patient care and reducing the occurrence of the errors so definitely uh it is a manual things are writing things i may will miss or something uh, will be taken consume of lot of time and maybe in busy schedule we miss that so those things can be reduced by with have the patient data management system because it has for the certain area to be filled and we we can't be ignore we have to be complete that system and we have to be prepared so that that is more useful in the uh, one in the reducing of medical errors as occur and automated medication dispensing can also reduction of medication errors in critical care units this is something automatically it timely it has going to be infused and retained surgical item detectors also as there no significant reduction in the rate but uh, retained surgical items are very well it has identified that may be metallic items sometime uh, maybe forceps or needles or surgical blades or something will left out in the surgical things can be detected and very easily will be come to know that all the items we are removed are not from the uh, surgical incision and before closing of the uh, surgical area so this is on patient portals definitely higher complaints to the preventive medical services and reduction of frequency of asthma attacks and improved patient medication adherence and disease awareness self management of disease and patient satisfaction but uh, there is no evidence on the improving the safety uh, patient safety but uh, definitely patient portals are help for the early recognition of their condition and increasing for the consuming of the means taking of the medications 
or they will get a lot of awareness about the disease and self management also can be encouraged with the patient portals and telemedicine that is a virtual visits this is again as effective as a face to face care with regard to specific clinical outcomes but there is no evidence regarding patient safety outcomes again this telemedicine the virtual visits in our hospital or all over india as we know that the telem manas is started in our institute again uh, we have one of the big team the telem manas unit has running uh, last year only it has initiated more than 10000 uh, phone calls we have received uh, even video calls also could be uh, done with the patients like counseling during of their stress or the suicidal ideations or any type of the psychological distress the situations can be handled very well with that but still the evidences in the patient safety outcomes we could not be uh, many time how uh, genuine that calls how genuine they are having what type of the uh, background they are there really they how they are reaching out to the patient these are certain difficulties still we could not be Uh, evidenced in this area that's the using of telemedicine and even telemonitoring the telemedicine and telemonitoring that improved co- clinical outcomes for patient with certain chronic diseases like taking up that is the congestive heart failure copd hypertension uh, here also the patient outcomes are not evidenced but uh, getting up something specialist services even for regular check up for the hypertension patient to visit the doctor maybe it's quite expensive Uh, through the uh, telemonitoring or entering of their uh, bp or their uh, st- vital signs uh, definitely they can be get off review by their experts and giving of the suggestions in that area this telemedicine or telemonitoring will be a lot of uh, economic the cost efficiency or cost effective in this area this is uh, worked out in the quality care and electronic incident reporting is a significant increase in adverse event reporting frequency definitely this was shown something adverse event also as from or anything accident uh, errors has happened that also it can be reported and that can be accessed by the immediately to the other health team and can be uh, awaken of themselves to be reducing of that type of the uh, what the negligence it has happened so that way this electronic incident reporting will be helped and everyone will be aware that team members who are all involved to be taken care of the patients can be aware about what it is happened exactly in that particular patient and overall electronic medical record as we are uh, from the last 3 uh, days you have keep on uh, talking about in this area improved guideline adherence definitely it will give the all uh, whatever the guidelines can be adhered ourselves or maybe patient or the, the healthcare professionals everyone has to be have followed with certain guidelines that can be possible with this uh, ema and reduction in medication errors can uh, possible and reduction in adverse drug reactions and no significant impact on mortality but in other area it has reduced the time and uh, sharing of the informations very fast and uh, getting up the information within uh, uh, our time and uh, even for the patients also can be go ahead with the whatever the flow or whatever the pathway they have to be move and how to get up their treatment follow these all the many uh, important areas this uh, oral electronic medical records are going to be helped in the quality healthcare but still there is no evidences as found in the reduction in the mortality next slide please and uh, finally the healthcare information technology will improve the individual patient care but also it brings to the many public health benefits early detection of the infection disease outbreaks around the country so we all will experience that icmr given for the timely and uh, every uh, minute they were uh, keeping to be uh, giving the data for the covid situations that is what that is uh, how fast we are receiving up the different parts of the country Uh, how the diseases are found and uh, the cases are finding uh, we could uh, isolate that particular area or make the red zone green zone safe zone these are all the things early detection of the infectious disease outbreaks so this is the health information technology will be lot of impact and uh, have increased to be uh, quality health services in this area in the public health and improve tracking of chronic disease management also definitely again that is a, we have all suffered in the pro that covid situations uh, we have uh, know that where to be how how i should be safe in that because of chronic disease management system and finally evaluation of healthcare based on the value based uh, enabled by collection of the de identified price and quality information that can be compared 
with using of the information technology. Next slide. So one more that year, uh, the study has reporting that how it will be helpful for the uh, quality improvement uh, in the uh, uh, using of health information technology. That's a, a Feldman SS and uh, which uh, which alter yes a at all health information technology in the healthcare quality and patient safety. This is one of the literature review. Uh, that health IT must meet quality improvement at uh, intersection with the carry delivery. Uh, from a clinical perspective, it look this is experienced on several levels and solution depends in part on the clinical problems addressed. Some typical examples of health IT interventions eliminated in the finding of include one is reminders and alerts. This is a best option, especially in the uh, for the nursing practitioner or nurses uh, care, nursing care, that reminder and alerts will be given the timely uh, infusion, timely giving up the drugs or feeding up the patient, changing up the position. These are all things, the reminders and alerts will be even for the health team members and even for the patients also to be have effective adherence of the drugs and giving efficiency of the treatment and uh, when to come for the follow up in all these areas, this it will be helpful for this IT. And decision support tools also will be helpful that way to go and which hospital is suitable for me, what way I can be choose the healthcare uh, services, to whom I are to be consult fast. These are the things, decision support tools and certain checklist also including order set and protocols also will be helpful for the software. It, is, uh, it will be present in the hospital. Through that, we can be see that where we are lacking and where we are miss that particular standard guidelines and how I should be added and the things. And as a soft and hard stops also can be helpful for the exactly the any negligence and medical errors can be controlled. So these are the, this research has given that certain IT interventions can be implicated and example for how we can improve the quality in the LK system. Next slide, please. Next slide. So one more the study the patient safety and health information technology. Uh, that's the American Congress of uh, Obstetricians and Gynecologists has reported. Uh, health IT is increasing patient engagement as consumers of the health because we consider that the patient is the in the healthcare system considered as a boss or centered. So their uh, engagement or decision or involvement is more important. So they have uh, reported that health IT is more boosting for the uh, patient engagement in the healthcare decision. It allows the patient to access their medical records and which help them to feel more knowledgeable about their conditions and encourages them to be actually participating in the safe decisions. Definitely, the patients can be read of their data and their uh, what the symptoms they have, they can access everything. This is possible uh, more. They can come up with the what the decision they can be choose and they felt to be best for themselves and uh, uh, communicate with the, effectively with the medical team to uh, with the partnership they can have certain uh, treatment modalities can be added. So this is this is a report has clearly stated that how patient engagement will be helpful by using of the uh, health information technology and uh, outside the patient encoder it can improve the follow for the missed appointment consult uh, uh, appointments and consultations and diagnostic testings also definitely now patient also they will be get some alarming signal or maybe reminders so when they have to come for the follow-up and where when they have to go for consultation or when they have to approach for the diagnostic testing and other things so this is a one uh, the research report as given by the american congress of uh, obstetrician and gynecologist about how health the uh, information technology will be helpful for in, uh, patient engagement in the decision making. Next slide, please. So this is still that uh, we have studied about how information technology are uh, helpful for boosting up the healthcare quality. Uh, we have uh, come up with the, what is healthcare quality and uh, how to assess healthcare quality and what are the domains we are considered healthcare quality. And the briefly with the some research studies, we have uh, summarized uh, learned or know about how healthcare information technology will be helpful for the improving the healthcare quality. And uh, one more the topic, uh, the section high received uh, to be in this webinar that is using informatics for enhance the evidence based practice. So now we are in the place of evidence based. Now the era of evidence based for everything 
even for simple one paracetamol tablet we want to purchase we will check the review or we will now see that uh, something like research or evidences how it is going to be uh, useful for my condition that, that, that we have reached in that area or in that era uh, everything we look back that evidence something should be have evidented or some review should be there or some literature should be there some research has to be done in that particular area so this is what we are to be how health information technology will be booster for the evidence practice we want to be look here mainly informatics can improve the patient safety through the design of software with the decision support which can alert the staff to critical information as we know that and evidence based practices combination of expert clinical opinion scientific research and patient uh, centered needs and desires so how we are to be utilize of those opinions scientific research and patient centeredness and desires to be implicated into the present situation that is only possible with the using of information technology only presently maybe if you go back look to the in our time maybe 20 years back if you go our literature review everything we should go to the library physically and we have to search the journals all these published journals books and collecting it was something like wasting of time and uh, we could not be get the enough resources to be presently what i need to be collected for my things but now it was made tremendous easy by application of the health information technology uh, very uh, quickly we can find with the any type of the information within our handy with our android mobiles or maybe with the google or anything surface or any things we can access of the services so that way how we can boost ourselves using of information technology into be utilization of evidence based practice next slide please so what is this evidence based practice here one of the case scenario our case today i wanted to be share here uh, mr shai is a clinical uh, nurse on a bone marrow transplantation and dermatology in patient unit uh, she is assigned to four patient three of which have multiple blood products ordered Uh, throughout the day, uh, Shai has noticed that healthcare assistant is uh, present, running from uh, room to room to obtain frequent vital signs on these patients. Uh, if all risk patient in room number twenty-five hits their call bell, like to ask for the help to the restroom, but health uh, care assistant uh, is busy in room number thirty-one with the uh, more vital signs recording of which the patient she wanted to be start with the bell transfusion. and uh, the patient decide to get up without assistant you will be fall down and uh, she starts to wonder is there a better way to do this she also realized that she has never uh, personally seen a blood transfusion reaction happen on the unit and ask herself how to often how to often do transfusion reaction actually happen so this is something she was not aware she was not studied that she was not come up with the uh how that blood transfusion uh, will be cause of the reaction and other things so is there any evidence support vital signs being done with this frequently uh, that is wanted something evidence some of the review or research study she required to be know that if she have clearly awareness that there is a vital signs are uh, related or correlated with the uh, maybe blood transfusion reactions if you have such studies if she has studied or she have come up aware of that evidences definitely she would have given uh, the better time for the other patient and clearly she can manage with the uh, confidently she would have uh, transmitted up the blood for those patients uh, unusually arying and moving those things can be so this is what we are something we required evidence support Uh, for us to be go ahead with the confidently to do something uh, what we are in the present situation so with this case study shows that how importance of evidence practice we required for in the healthcare system next slide please so evidence based practice is uh, it is a comprehensive that is one is best scientific evidence for our practice and clinical experiences we must be have certain experiences in that particular area and patient values there is no compromise in the patient values whatever the evidences we have finally it has to be met the uh, our patient centered and patient values has to be approved so with this all three interlocking circles we consider what is evidence based practice go to the next slide 
So evidence based practice is applying or translating research finding into our daily patient care practices and clinical decision making. This is very clearly very simple. It may understood that we are going to translate the research findings already which has done or searched or the maybe something like tested or approved or trialed. So those findings we are going to take into the present practices and we will have come up with the better clinical decision making in present situation what my patients are required. So in this area, I personally has done in my uh, PhD time that is a uh, effectiveness of psychoeducation on uh, caregivers burden and even for the uh, knowledge enhancement of the caregivers regarding schizophrenia. Uh, I felt that uh, the patients and family members who come for the mental health setting, they are very much lacking in the uh, about the disease aspect or drugs and other things. So that I found that initiated, we have started with the psychoeducation unit in our institute. Uh, now presently, a uh, lot of patients are get benefited and family members are getting benefited out of that center to be uh, imparting of their uh, knowledge or maybe imparting about their information about the uh, illnesses and as well as follow up and to come for the follow up and as well as for more about the medications how to take medication to stop medication when to come for the hospital how to manage up the side effects the doses consumption these all the things are helped out so this is what we call is a uh, some of the research uh, initiated and the findings are initiated to be put into the daily practice and taken something decision making that what to be implicated or what to be changed in the setting and evidence based practice also involves integrating the best available evidences with the clinical knowledge expertise while considering patients unique needs and personal preferences also is there and also if you use consistently optimal patient outcomes are more likely to be achieved so next slide please so using evidence-based practice means abandoning outdated care delivery practices as very simple. Maybe outdated things can be removed or may not be presently, it will be implicated or it can be suited for the present scenario. For example, the before COVID, we have something hand, washes, hand washing has to be done with the water and soap only. But during the COVID time, even there is no water, there is no sink facility, there is no tap, you could sanitize your hands with the sanitizers. So that is a something we have come up with a new idea. Even there is a no place and no facility for hand washing with the water soap, we could sanitize ourselves. So that is something what we are abandoning outdated things can be removed and choose the effective, presently, scientifically validated method to meet with the present scenario with the available things. So that is what we have using of evidence-based practices can be used. And also healthcare providers who use evidence-based must be skilled at screening the value of research for this specific patient population. This is very, very intellectually and consciously the researcher has to be choose that what type of evidence-based research has to be implicated for their particular specific patient population. That means, for example, if the study has conducted in the America or some of the country, the population is characteristics are entirely different. Their attitude, belief, or their nature, or language, or their uh, values, everything is different to be not be suitable for in the context of Indian population. So have only taken that research can't be implicated directly in my setting or in my context. But before that, I should conduct something, uh, research and then can be implicated. So that is very much consciously, very intellectually, the researcher has to be uh, discriminating the value of research, whether that specific patient population can be used or not. So that is very important. Next slide, please. So coming to what are the advantages we have with evidence-based practice in specifically in the nursing or in the medical team, medical healthcare facility. So improve the patient outcome through the superior care. I told it definitely what the already has done, tested, trialed, and it has given the best report for the particular population. So that can be implicated directly into the things and maximize provider time and reduces cost. So in the view of the healthcare quality, what we have talked about the uh, time and reduce the cost. So that area, this evidence-based also will be helped out to be using. Mainly, I told you the hand washing facility. So without water, the soap, you can sanitize with a very handy or keeping in the 
packets and move everywhere. So without any trouble or accessing up resources, wasting up time, we are sanitized and we are doing up the our services. So that is what we have maximized providers' time and reduces cost that evidences will be make us to be uh, helped and also adds new contribution to the science, uh, maybe in the medicine or in the nursing. So what it has to be new idea, outdated things uh, may not be benefited in the present scenario or it is difficult to be used. So in such situations, we require something new idea, new uh, contribution has to be done. So that is possible, this evidence-based uh, practice can be helpful and advantaged into the nursing as well as in the medical practice. Next slide, please. There are the three main components are there in the evidence-based practice. One is utilize the best external evidences. So this is what we have the, what the best and it is suitable for your context that has to be drawn. That is very, very important and keen uh, researcher has to look that what type of the research and the evidence has to be taken to be implicated in the things. Draw any individual clinical expertise. Make sure that in that particular area, how you are confident to be implicated of that services or intervention and consider patient value and expectations. So this is very, very important because one, we are told clinical effectiveness, clinical experience, and finally the patient expectation, patient values and patient needs. So even though we have did with the excellent study, but the particular, the unique quality of the patient or expectation values are different. Any time, maybe we have did for thousands schizophrenic patients for the something that tested the drug, but again we are giving up this particular patient. Definitely, we look for the what the demographic and uh, socio-economic and other extraneous factors are influencing for the receiving of those particular drugs. Like that, consider patient values and expectation. There are the three main components we should be adhered and you should be considered consciously by the researcher. The, what is the best research we took here and how the clinical expertise ourselves to be implicated of that evidence and also consider that the evidence has to be considered the patient values and expectations. Next slide, please. So this is what the process, how that evidence-based practice has to be in the continuous process and selecting or implicating into the practice with the evidences. The first step is ask. So this is ask our assessment. So this is something we have to clinical decision. What my patient or the context population is required the research. Is it that research is useful for my setting or that intervention is can be implicated in the, So that is asking of ourselves and properly assessing of that my population. Is it suitable to be implicate of that intervention and other things? This is something convert information lead into a answerable clinical question. Maybe your patient or your population has certain things or you have taken certain research which has certain intervention as done. That intervention is comfortable to be implicated for in your context. So that is what the first uh, step is ask that is convert the information need into answerable clinical question. The next is the acquire. This is acquire is track down best evidence for answering the question. So what is your question and whether that question is answered by that particular research review or the research evidence you are collected, whether it is going to be answer or give the solution for that. Next is the appraise. Here, critically appraise the evidence for validity, impact, and applicability. So this area, we have to see that methodology, the sample, how much the sample size they are did, and what the uh, uh, variables they are have done, what the interventions, the age group, all these things has to be critically, we must be appraised and validated and try to be applicability is suitable or not, we have to be appraised. The next step is apply. So this is integrate the evidence into your clinical decision making. So finally, we try to be implicated in my context about the what the review or the research or evidence you are planned to be implicated. And finally, we are going to evaluate that is a one to four again to see the back to the improve the next time how we have to be improved. Maybe some extent I am improved. Maybe for example, my research component I try to be improved start with the psychoeducation you need. Uh, my intention was that giving the psychoeducation, especially on the disease aspect and the symptoms management, the family burden, how to manage. But uh, most of the time, 
uh, the patient's load and other things we could not be uh, uh, in that particular area i in the opd could not be concentrated because most of the patients come with the uh, number of medications in their hand and they want to be moved from there to be only understanding and know about how to take the drugs and when to come for the follow so this is only the component we can be focused and concentrated we could not be completely educate them in the disease aspect or other things so like that some of the uh what improvement i can make maybe in the opd is not possible i can be place psychoeducation unit in the inpatient also so inpatient it is a better to be give the uh, detailed education about the disease aspect and prognosis symptoms management and other things but in the opd it's a difficult like that we have something auditing can be done uh, with the in the evaluating step how we can improve Uh, that uh, evidence can be implicated better way in the other way way like that so this is the what the process of how evidence based practice can be implicated in the things so totally this process is completely it is depend on the information technology and practices only so how we have collected the because without information technology we could not be access of the review, review or research so we even many softwares are come with the presently with the keywords and other things very well that support the studies are come a list of studies will be come to in front of our desktop and we can collect that the best study which is more suitable to my context can be selected and how it can be suited for the population all this the process definitely information technology will be worked out into be enhancing of the evidence based practice next slide please so coming to the overall the benefit of evidence based in the nursing as we know besides keeping the healthcare practices relevant and current always evidence based practice is more of the range of other benefits in our patients specifically the promotes positive patient outcomes reduces healthcare cost by preventing complications contribute to the growth of science of nursing and even for medicine allow for the incorporation of new technology into healthcare practices so many healthcare technologies can be improved into the healthcare practices increases nurse autonomy and confidence in decision making because that the evidence is already tested or maybe proved that how that thing has helped it has something findings are uh, published or reported so with something we we'll have some confidence to be implicate of in the present scenario in the present in the current practices so it increases autonomy and confidence in the decision making and ensures relevancy of nursing practice with new interventions and care protocols and provide scientifically supported research to help well inform decision making and foster the shared decision making with the patient in their care planning even we can we have increase of the patients also to be involved in the care planning and enhances critical thinking and increases the lifelong learning so these are the overall the benefits what we are gain from the evidence based practice next slide please so exactly coming to the last the core of this uh, session that is how we are using the informatic technology for enhancing evidence based practice so here i wanted to be how share with some of the research reviews are uh, giving the summary of that how that evidence based practice can be better used into the field of uh, using of information technology one of the study has conducted by beckon has an informatic infrastructure is essential for evidence based practice that is a uh, one of the that is a journal of american medical information association it was published in 2001 uh, let us see the summary of this uh, thing uh, one is a standardized terminology and structure so we have there are the five building blocks are there in the evidence based Uh, components how we can be implicated into the practice the standardized terminology and structure uh, structure things as provide the basis for indexing digital sources for evidence and matching sources to clinical specific needs uh, we will be know that with this terminologies we can help to be find that what the digital resources are there how it can be matches for the present clinical specific needs so that is helped and it made to be practice facilitate the creation of comfortable electronic patient records so very well we can be with that we can be prepare and what type of the studies will be help out or what type of intervention is helpful for the patients to be used with the uh, comfortable electronic patient records and next standards for uh, representation of knowledge facilities that application of decision support rules no doubt we are founding with the knowledge uh, representation of knowledge and application and decision support 
and it helps to be practice formalizing the documentation of the clinical decision making process and computable representation of terminology support data aggression and reuse across heterogeneous representation and also acquire monitor and trans transforming uh, these are things the data will be help out for the how these standardized terminology center uh, structures in the software are in the uh, websites we collected and it can be implicated into the practice and another building block is that is a digital source of evidence this provides the access to evidences and support the communication among computer based system to bring together patient data and decision logic so no doubt support aggregation of data across time and geography link process to the outcome so we can collect even in my things we can within no time i can be search for my patient what the context and the data i wanted to be have immediately i can be put for my patient data and compare what type of the decision or intervention is required with the uh information technology and data exchange standard this is something logic it can be implicated and facilitate for the delivery uh, of child uh, health related uh, messages based on patient specific data and also integrate and link heterogeneous sources of evidences can be done and this will be helpful again for the uh, communicating of our uh, data to the other uh, country and what they are practicing what i we are practicing which is the best i can be plan and initiating for the new interventions how it can be benefited that is something data exchange standards and informatic process it is nothing but uh, uh, present clinician alerts related to potential adverse events and use decision analytic techniques to tell the evidence to specific patients so these area this informatic process will be help that for the health team members can be have alerts and an how analytical technique can be used that what the specific evidences is required for their patients and this can be helpful for the uh, for forming up data mining can be used in the practice and informatic competencies so here the uh, for form critical analysis of evidence for its applicability to be practiced uh, here we can have evaluate the effect of evidence based practice uh, recommendations in the clinical setting so what exactly required maybe uh, how we are searching what type of the research or intervention in my context how it can be changed or modified can be implicated in those areas we can be have the practice so this is what that research study has given the report how information technology will be help out to be boosting up the evidence practice in the healthcare system next slide please so this is the one enabling the evidence continue through the informatics uh, how we can be Uh, in the current uh, environment, how we can boost our self using of information technology uh, in the evidence based one is generating. So generating is something collecting up the evidences or research reviews or searching up the literature to be what has to be done, translate into be present and uh, disseminating and implementing to be in our setting and adapting and assessing. So this is something continue and boosting of your evidence based practice by using up the. information technology so this is something what we have to be continuous process how we have to be implicated by using of the in health information technology next slide please so here one more that example that it has given which are all the sources are the type of the sources we can be get up the evidences with the using of software or maybe information technology or website and all this uh, uh, databases and other things Uh, we have bibliographic uh, primary literatures we are getting from the traditionally we have medline cumulative index of nursing allied health literature in all and the ovid database individual journals maybe british medical or many journals we are coming up now full text even journals also we are getting structured reporting synthesis the trial blanks are though also is there but there we can find that which are the drugs and other therapies as tried done and approved by the something drug control boards and other things and electronic textbooks are available that is something example like arison's principles of medicine kaplan and sodex comprehensive textbook of psychiatry uh, cochrane collaboration these are something electronic textbooks so nowadays everything the uh, children also friendly to be used of the electronic books so libraries has to be digitalized and they have to get the accessing of the all electronic mode or the pdf format of the books and the systematic reviews like cochrane collaboration john bix institute of evidence based nursing and midwifery these are certain things systematic reviews are getting practice parameters standards of care like american association of critical care nurses we have 
practice guidelines, disease management plans, that is national guidelines, uh, clear views, American Academy of Pediatrics, American Diabetic Association, they are working on national nursing uh, quality indicator databases, their health plan, embryo employer data and information set is their HEDIS, California Office of uh, Statewide Health Planning and Development is there. And we have some comparative database like knowledge bases are there, diagnostic decision support, he explained, uh, he lied. And even re related to pharmacy, we have a national drug uh, data file is there, micromedics is there, even genomic also we have with the data, uh, genobank, molecular modeling database. These are all the many resources that is the uh, information technology will be help us to be utilizing of the evidences are uh, the research which has already conducted and approved and uh, can be very safely can be implicated into the practice. So this is one of the research study has given the references are the uh, report about the, what are the softwares and what are the databases we can be accessing for the evidences for the practices. Next slide, please. So we have reached to the, the last ending. Uh, I hope uh, we have discussed till now what is the healthcare quality and how health information technology will be helpful for the improving of the healthcare quality by implicating of hospital healthcare system management, electronic medical record, and many software are there, how it can be improved quality and patient safety and etc. And one more topic that is why I discussed about how to be improve the evidence-based practice by using of the health information technology. As we know that without information technology, we could not be go ahead with the implication of evidences into practices. So now we have to be accessing of the data which has already loaded, are trialed, conducted, and those areas we have to be take into context and practice it. So this is about uh, what I have got the uh, topic and completed. Uh, thank you for giving me opportunity to share my view with the uh, urgency. Uh, no problem. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was so thorough. Uh, very well.